Mm. Well, uh, the red wave has not materialized in the House yet, but you know where it did materialize? The great state of Florida. The cover of the New York Post says young GOP star DeSantis romps to victory in Florida. DeSantis is the future because it looks like he will win by about 20 points, which is extraordinary given the fact that back in 2018, he beat uh, Gilliam by just 33,000. Uh, DeSantis won everywhere in the state and in particular in notable Democrat strongholds like and we've been talking about this uh, over the last week in Miami-Dade County, which Joe Biden won by 85,000 points. Ron DeSantis will win by close to double digits. It is now a ruby red state. DeSantis is welcoming anyone who wants to escape their liberal states. Conservatism just works there. There he is with his family last night. Once the nation's premier swing state back in 2000, then George, uh, George W. Bush won the presidency by a margin of just 500 votes. It's pretty clear that Florida that. <laughs> has shifted to red now. Florida does not have a single Democrat holding a statewide office. Here was his victory speech last night. Night. After four years, the people have delivered their verdict. Freedom is here to stay. We saw freedom in our very way of life and so many other jurisdictions in this country wither on the vine, Florida held the line. We chose facts over fear. We chose education over indoctrination. We chose law and order over rioting and disorder. Florida was a refuge of sanity when the world went mad. We stood as a citadel of freedom for people across this country and indeed across the world. So the other thing to add in, uh, another one who had a convincing victory, despite zillions of dollars he spent against him, was Marco, Marco Rubio. Rubio. He was really strong. Val Deming's law enforcement background, high-profile name, very good speaker, huge dollars behind them. But bottom line is, Marco Rubio is not vulnerable because he's done a very good job. He was basically the Secretary of State for the Central and South America under Trump, and then he was the end, the mind behind. Uh, the PPP loans. Well, the execution uh, was fine, and you had to follow up to see who took advantage of the system. It shows he acted under under pressure to get people money when they were forced to give up their jobs. So it does not surprise me. The other thing is that people constantly speculate. When you are unhappy with your state and you move to another state, are you going to take your politics with you? So far in Texas, the answer is no, and so far in Florida, the answer is no. But it just uh, so it's a segmentation of America. However, if you look at what happened in New York with Lee Zeldin closing in tight on Kathy Hochul despite $50 billion in her coffers and outnumbering Republicans three to one, you see how many seats shifted. And right now, Zeldin's probably within five points. It might be out of reach for him. There's no been concession there. You see there's some unhappiness. But I don't know about you guys. I'm shocked there was a no red wave. If you think about inflation, a 40-year high, crime that worked since the 1980s, the unpopular president with an agenda that's right. more green-oriented than people-oriented. And, and evidently, Jen Psaki said last night, uh, she called the White House and she says they are giddy on the results, which I think I is premature because they could lose both chambers still. And one looks very much uh, in Republican hands although not officially there. Well, it's just clear that our country is completely divided now. You're either very conservative or you're radical and you're progressive and you're woke left. And the facts don't seem to matter here. Some of these individuals that won, when you look at their records, they are so extreme and so progressive. Mm -hmm. Uh, people are just dug in. They're dug in really deep right now. And uh, uh, John Fetterman, you're talking about? Absolutely. He is so extreme. Wants to open up a third of the prisons. Doesn't frack. Yeah, exactly. And lied about it. How about Mandela Barnes? I mean, he wants to open 50 percent of the of the prisons. Right. He's trailing. And he's running against uh, Ron Johnson. But it's still it's still tight. But how do you explain this country now, Brian? To your point, I mean, we have open borders, record gas prices, inflation is the worst in 40 right. years. The president's approval ratings are so bad. Worst crime since. 
since the 1980s, and yet uh, I heard last night this is an indictment on the Republican Party. Is well, it? I mean, why? How are these these issues when our country is in such a bad state right now? How is this not a red wave? Well, you know. When you look at how the Democrats, and I, and Brian, to your point, I, I get why the White House would be giddy because yesterday we were talking about you look at the, look we, at the you looked at the polls, and they suggested that there was going to be a gigantic red wave. There has been no red wave yet, but it's still too close to call uh, regarding the Senate and a bunch of House seats. Uh, have not been called, so they lean to the right for the most part. They're leaning toward the Republicans. But I think what is, I think what proved uh, was proven yesterday is America is more in the middle, and ultimately, well, there are a lot of people who are very strident in their politics, but there are the people in the middle who ultimately decided. If the, Demo the Democrats were able to uh, limit their losses through the issue of abortion, and I was looking over at uh, the CNN exit polls, they said that 27 percent of the voters in House races said that abortion was their number one issue, second only to inflation. And of those who cited abortion as their most important issue, 76 percent voted for the Democrat. Also, abortion uh, voters sided with Democrats in favor of abortion rights in Michigan, California, and Vermont. So while we've been talking a lot about inflation, and it certainly does impact people, it seems like abortion was a gigantic motivator for Democrats. Yeah, and we're going to see what happens, because you mentioned uh, radical up the middle. Uh, Mandela Barnes is way to the left in Wisconsin. Uh, John Fetterman is way to the left in uh, Pennsylvania. Yep. Uh, Adam, Warnock, yeah. Warnock is very Warnock is way to the left, pretending that he wasn't in Congress. But listen, right now there's so much to determine. This is why you got to watch throughout the show. Things are changing. Think about Nevada. Uh, right now we're 48-48. Uh, Adam Waxel slightly in front. And then you see what's happening in Georgia. We look like we're heading to a runoff. I don't think anyone doubts that. But we'll see what the runoff will mean because uh, you have also in the Senate race Mark Kelly with his lead but is shrinking in Arizona. All this is developing throughout our show. Well, Florida is, it's, everyone's watching Florida. That was interesting, the New York Post cover, the future. So we'll find out if he's going to run for president. We don't know yet if President Trump is going to run for president. It, it, it was very telling, week. Ainsley, in that soundbite we ran with Ron DeSantis, they were chanting two, two more, more years. years, clearly. Those people are thinking he's going to the White House. Well, and Marco Rubio, Trump. first Republican in Florida to win a third six-year term. Yeah, he right. was outraised and outspent by Val Demings, as you mentioned. Rubio won re-election by more than 16 points. Well, Francis Suarez is somebody people are saying he's such a great mayor in Miami. They're saying don't be surprised if he runs for president. He's joining us in about 20 minutes. Also, Anna Paulina Luna, she just won Florida's 13th district to the U.S. Congress, and she will be with us as well. We have a lot to discuss, uh, so many notes, and so a lot many to are decide. developing. In